we move forward now into the next two paragraphs of Philippians. And what I want to do in this lab is to get the big picture of what Paul is up to in these two paragraphs, and then we'll come back for the juicy details and insights in more labs to come. So he begins here in verse 19 with a a plan to send Timothy. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon so that I too may be cheered by news of you, for I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare, for they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy's proven worth, how as a son with a father he has served with me in the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him. So that's the plan, to send Timothy, just as soon as I see how it will go with me, and I trust in the Lord, that shortly I myself will come also. So I suppose on the surface, you might say, it looks like Paul is um, launching into a description of some travel plans, both for himself and for Timothy. But it's not going to prove to be quite like that. The next paragraph is going to be more travel plans, but we're going to see more. So, Father, as we take a few minutes now to get the big picture of these two paragraphs, show us the amazing way that Paul is thinking and structuring this letter to encourage us to be unified and fearless in the cause of the gospel, with Timothy and Epaphroditus being amazing, beautiful, exemplary uh, illustrations of this kind of life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So it looks like it looks like travel plans, but here's Epaphroditus. This on the surface may look like Paul's travel plans or Epaphroditus' travel plans. I have thought it necessary to send you Epaphroditus. So not only Timothy, but Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier and your messenger and minister to my need, for he has been longing for you all and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. Indeed, he was ill, near to death, but God had mercy on him and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, that you may rejoice at seeing him again and that I may be less anxious. So... Receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men. For he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. So this could, on the surface, sound like just more uh, travel plans that Paul has for his, his co-workers, Timothy and Epaphroditus. But you, I'm sure, have spotted already In what I just read so quickly, more is going on here than mere information about who travels where, when. And what I'm going to argue is that both Epaphroditus in this paragraph and Timothy in this paragraph are examples models of the main points that Paul has been trying to make. So let's go back and review those main points just so we can see whether this is so or not. I argue that here in these verses 127, we got a handle on the central issue. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. So live in such a way as to show the worth of Christ and the worth of the gospel so that you are walking fittingly, appropriately, in step with that gospel and just showing, showing his worth. So that whether I come and see you or am absent, thinking about his travels there, I may hear of you that you are, and here he gets into the details of what this life would look like, this manner of life. You are standing firm in one spirit with one mind, striving side by side. So those three ways of saying unity. 
one spirit, one mind, side by side, for the faith of the gospel. So unity, unified heart, unified mind, unified striving for the faith of the gospel. And secondly now, so that's one, here comes the second main emphasis, not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation. So you may remember I said uh, fearless unity for the gospel or more more ultimately for the, the glory or the worth of Christ in the gospel is Paul's main emphasis practically in this letter. And then comes chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, where he gets nitty-gritty specific about how that's going to come about. How will that unity and fearlessness be achieved? And he says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility. There's the rock-bottom key. Humility. Count others more significant than yourselves. That's the only way the church is going to experience Unity in the cause of the gospel is if we will humble ourselves instead of exalting ourselves, not be selfish, but selfless, not be conceited, but self-humbling, abasing, and counting others more significant than ourselves. So this is an an other-oriented life of service. That's how this unity in the gospel will go forward. And more specifically, let each of you then, in that kind of humility, look not only to his own interests, but to the interests of of others. This is an other-oriented life of service. That's how the fearless unity is going to come about. And then he gives Jesus as an example of this. Have this mind among yourselves, this mind of humble, other-oriented service that is fearless in the face of its enemies. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, and here's he's, Jesus is, is showing the way, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. So he, he renounces all that glory that he had in heaven. He goes all the way down to serve others. Being found in human form, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to God to the point of death, even death on a cross. That's, that's humble, other-oriented, fearless, service. That's the main point of this book, to try to get us to live like that for the gospel. Unified, fearless, side-by-side, Christ-exalting labor for the gospel. Okay, now, Timothy. Why bring up Timothy? Why bother to tell about his travel plans? Look at this. I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. For they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy's proven worth. How is the son with the father he has served? You cannot read that and not remember Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but the interests of others. Timothy is an example of that. That's why this paragraph is here. The the, the surface reason is, I'm going to tell you about my plans for him to travel, but really I want you to see what kind of man this is. He's the kind of person that I'm trying to get you to be. How about Epaphroditus? Let's go to the end just to keep it short. Receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men. Why? He nearly died for the 
the, the gospel work of Christ, risking his life, just like his master Jesus in chapter 2, verses 5 to 8, to complete what was lacking in your service to me. Not, he, he didn't take himself into account here. He wanted to, if necessary, die in order to complete their service. So he's another example of other oriented, humble, lowly service for others. That's what's going on in the next two big paragraphs in Philippians. Let me just end like this. Let's jump over to chapter 3, verse 17. Brothers, he's talking to us now, who's reading the letter. Join in imitating me. He gave himself as an example in chapter 1 about how he's in prison. And how God is turning that for the glory of the gospel. And he's going to give himself as an example in chapter 3. Join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example that you have in us. That's Epaphroditus and Timothy. Or maybe Epaphroditus and Timothy is right here in us. And I'll just end with this. Paul believed with all his might, it seems, in personal examples having powerful effect. Timothy, be like him. Epaphroditus, be like him. Timothy, live for others. Epaphroditus was willing to die. Imitate such men. So let's, let's try to both do that, look to the best examples in the Bible and in the people we know, and be that kind of people.